Inhale, give you for Om. Om. Om Triambakam Yajama Hesukandim Pushti Vadanam. That's a way of us. Inhale, give you for Om. Om. Om Triambakam Yajama Hesukandim Pushti Vadanam. Ova Rukamiva Bandana Richo Mukhi Amrita Om Shanti 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 Om Ti 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 Anjananjali Mudra, bow your head off your practice today to all the Holy beings who have handed down this practice to us over the centuries, the sages, the rishis, the sannyasins, the swamis, the sadhus, the householders. Just give thanks to them for this practice. Namaste. Tadasan vinyasas. Standing in Tadasan, Ujjayi breathing. Chest up, chin slightly down, look hard. Inhale, raise the arms over the head. Lift the palms, lift out of your hips. Pause. Exhale. Tadasan. Inhale, same thing. Eyes closed if your balance is good. Exhale. Inhale. Lift the palms as you exhale, thumbs to the back of the neck. Completely empty the lungs, palms face up. Hold the breath out, by Kumbhaka, Bandal. Inhale, hands to the ceiling. Exhale, Tadasan. Inhale, arms over the head, flip the palms. Arms for Bangi, side stretch. Chin down, lift. Exhale, to the right. Lift the chin, look straight ahead. Inhale, center, chin down. Exhale, left. Push into the right foot, top shoulder back. Inhale, up. Exhale, right, hold for one breath, short inhale, and a long exhale. At the end of the long exhale, hold the breath out, Banda. When you're ready, come to the center and do the other side. Push into the opposite foot. Extend through the arm, especially the bottom arm, to open the side of the lungs. When you're ready, make your way back to Tadasana. And go back a little bit on your back, on your mat line, so you've got more space to the side. Stag yourself a bit more. Yeah, that's it. Okay, and then inhale, arms widen overhead, flip your palms. Exhale, fold halfway. Hips back, chin down, look navel. Inhale, come up. Arch back a little bit at the top. Exhale, halfway. Pause at the end. Inhale, come up. Arch back a little bit. Chin down. Exhale, fold. This time, hold the Ardha Uttanasana, half forward fold. Inhale, arms wide like wings. 
Exhale, arms forward, flip the palms. Push the sit bones away from the hands. Inhale, stand up, arch back at the top. Exhale, fold all the way down, Purna Uttanasana. Release the hands to the legs or the floor. Flip the palms, inhale, come up. Arch back a little at the top. Exhale, all the way. And take hold of the heels or the big toes or the shins. And inhale, look up. And exhale, fold round the back, relax the neck. Three breaths, lengthen the exhales. Transfer the weight forward so your toes are active. Completely relax your neck. Gaze at the tip of the nose. Pause optional at the end of the breaths. Bandit. After your three breaths, make your way back to Tadasana. Surya Namaskar, inhale, exhale Anjali Mudra, inhale, widen over, exhale, fold forward, smooth Ujjayi breathing, completely relaxed mind, little inhale, Exhale, Ukatasan. Completely empty your lungs, look perineum. Little breaths to the back of the heart so you feel the back of the heart expand a little bit. Hold the breath, hop or step, Chaturanga. All the way to the floor, full prostration. Hands back. Fully exhale in Chaturanga. Knees can stay down. Inhale, move forward, upward facing dog, chin down. Hold. Exhale, downward facing dog, empty your lungs. Soften the knees, hop or step, Upatasana. Inhale, straighten the legs. Keep the abdomen on the thighs. Exhale, fold into the legs, relax the neck. Flip the palms, hips back. Inhale up. Now arch back a little bit at the top of the chin down if you want. Exhale, Anjali Mudra. Okay. Hands to the side, Tadasana. And do one round with the mantra. <clears throat> Inhale. Anjali. Om Mitri Namaha. Om Ravi Namaha. Om Sare Namaha. Om Banavi Namaha. Om Kake Namaha. Om Pushni Namaha. Om Hirani Agave Namaha. Om Mariche Namaha. Om Madiche Namaha.
ಓಂ ಸವಿತ್ರೇ ನಮಃ ಓಂ ಮಕೇ ನಮಃ ಅಂಜಾಳಿ ಓಂ ಭಾಸ್ಕರೇ ನಮಃ Turn to the right, stand in Tadasana, the middle of your mat. Trikhanasana, Paravita Trikhanasana. Triangle and revolve triangle. Inhale, raise the arms to the level. Exhale. Hop a step. Feet 30 degrees, inhale. Exhale, vinyasa to the right. Move the hips back. As you go down. Inhale, come up. Push into the right foot. Lift the inside of the left. Go to the left side. Don't turn the feet. Inhale, come up. Push the hips back and to the side. Go down to the right. Inhale, lift. Exhale, change. Inhale. You pause slightly in the middle, lift the chest, exhale, go down. And three breaths, side wall or top hand drishti. Long exhales. After you've done your three breaths on that side, come up and switch sides. Pressing on the outside of the right foot, the inside of the left foot, connecting the prana and the pelvis. Long exhales, control in lower abdomen. When you've done your three, come up. Sukhanasana Stiti. Don't rush, take your time with your breath. Hold the Trikhanasana Stiti if you're there. And then exhale, bring the hands to the waist. Good, inhale, arm, shoulder, level. Exhale, look hard. Inhale, arch back, turn the palms up, squeeze the shoulder blades. Exhale, fold forward, hips back, hold the heels. The stronger Ujjayi as you go down to make it really controlled, hold the heels or the backs of the legs. And then inhale, come up, arms wide like wings, turn the palms up, arch back, look up, optional. Open the chest. Exhale all the way down. You can hold the heels or the big toes. And inhale, you can take a little look up. And then exhale, fold. Relax the neck, look nose tip. Or eyes closed, look navel. Three breaths, long exhales, optional banders. Completely relax your neck. Once you're in the posture, try not to jiffle around. Just keep still, meditate on your breath. And in the posture, there should be no effort once you've attained the posture. The vinyasas are the preparation of posture, and the posture itself is breathing, pranayama. And then inhale, look up, bring the hands under your shoulders and lean forward so you've got equal weight in your hands and your feet. Exhale, bend the knees and hop or step the feet hip distance apart with the toes turned slightly out. 
Inhale and then exhale, malasana squat down. Lift your chest up, bring your chin down, look perineum for your jay breaths. You can have your hands on the floor, hands over your heart and prayer, whatever you need to support yourself. Look down to your perineum and lengthen your exhales. Do what you can. After your third breath, inhale, start to straighten your legs, turn your feet parallel, and exhale, fold into your legs. Relax your neck and inhale, roll your spine up, one vertebrae at a time. And as you exhale, hop or step your feet together. Turn to face the front, stand in Tadasana, Brixasana tree. Inhale, bend your right knee to your chest. Choose a point of focus on the floor. Turn the foot out and bring the foot to the inner thigh, or you can work in half lotus if you want. And Jali Mudra. Inhale, arms widen over your head, flip your palms. And exhale, press your palms together. Om Bhuva Bhuva Swaha Tat Savito Varanyam Bhago Devasya Dimahi Diyo Yonat Pachodayata Om Shanti 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 Hi Om Pervaha Inhale, knee forward, extend. Exhale, Tadasana to the other side. Arms are flipped when they first go over the head and then you just gently press the palms. Om Boa Bhuva Swaha Tat Savito Varanyam Bhago Devasya Dimahi Diyo Yonat Prachodayata Om Shanti 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 Om Paraha Inhale, knee forward, bend the leg. Exhale, nyasa, place the foot on the floor. Lead and return sequence, inhale. Exhale, look hard. Inhale, widen overhead, lift the palms, lift. Exhale, palms face forward. Inhale, arch from the upper back, don't bend the knees. Exhale, fold all the way. Little inhale. Exhale, Ukatasan. Little inhale. Chaturanga Dandasan. Inhale, Udva Mukhasvanasan. Exhale, Adho Mukhasvanasan. Three breaths. Long exhales, optional band moves. Bring your chin in towards your chest and gaze nabby navel with the eyes closed. After your three breaths, Ukatasan, sit down, Dandasan. Hop or step forward. Ukatasan, then sit down. Staff pose, Dandasan. Hands beside the hips. Chest up, chin down, look hard. Inhale, arms over the head, flip the palms. Exhale, stay still. 
Inhale, roll onto your back arms over your head. Exhale, hands beside the body, take rest. Look, heart, Rigaya, switch off Ujjayi. Tataka Mudra. Inhale, flip the palms, bring the arms over the head. Look navel, relax upper palate, soft palate and tongue. Exhale fully till the lungs are completely empty. Flex the feet, draw the lower back down, hold the breath out. Mula Bandha, perineum, Uddiyana Bandha, lower, navel, lower abdomen, pond in the mouth, pond in the eyes. Three pond mudra. The inhale, bring the arms up over your face, change into lock of your fingers. Exhale, arms over the head, flex feet, lower back down, look nabby, navel. Hold the breath out, completely empty the lungs, Tataka Mudra. When you're ready, inhale, hands over the face. Exhale, hands to the sides, take rest. Look heart, switch off Ujjayi breathing. Hands close to the body, feet together. After Tataka Mudra, this is the way to rest as opposed to the feet wide. Some of the sequence, you can have the feet wider, but after Tataka Mudra, which is putting the energy into the Sushumna Nadi in the center of the spine, you keep the palms down, the feet together, to concentrate the energy in the center of the body. And then inhale, arms over the head, flip the palms. You can bend the knees a bit here if you need to, to sit up and then exhale fully, separate the palms, arms over the head, Anastasia. At the end of the exhale, hold the breath out, sit up, go all the way over and take the big toes. Round the back, forward bend. Just the big toes with the first two fingers. That's the vinyasa. And then flip the palms, inhale, come up and roll all the way onto your back. Fully exhale. Separate the palms. Sit up. Bring the hands over the tops of the feet with the fingers pointing towards the heels. Round the back, forward bend. Pause, lungs empty, flip the palms, inhale, come up, all the way onto your back. Third vinyasa, exhale, when the lungs are empty, separate the palms, sit up. Take the outsides of the feet, forward bend. Empty the lungs, pause. Lift the palms, inhale, arms over the head and stay there. Exhale, Dandasana, hands beside the hips. Chest up, chin down, look hard, Ujjayi breathing. Janus Ishasan, inhale, bend the right knee to the chest. Exhale, knee out, foot to the inner thigh or half lotus. Inhale, arms over the head. Bring your knee in a bit. So, no, just, just bring them closer, that's it. Bring your knee, knee closer. You don't have to wrench your foot up, but just bring your knee back. Yeah. Inhale, arms over your head. Exhale, fold over the straight leg. Inhale, come up. Exhale down. Inhale up. 
and lift a little more. Exhale down. Three Ujjayi breaths. Look, Navi, navel, hands on the leg or hold the foot. Long exhales, optional bandas. Try to work your shoulders so they're the same distance from the floor. So that, yeah, that's better, more there. Your eyes are closed. You're looking into the center of your body behind your navel. And your shoulders are completely relaxed. Let the back round. When you've done your three, inhale, come up. Let the palms turn to the right. Exhale, fold inside left. Inhale, come up. Turn to face front, lift up. Exhale, turn to the right and fold inside the left. Go the way you can. Take a variation, three breaths, long exhales. Take the hand holds on. Optional banders at the end of the exhales. That one's right. Yeah. This one goes that way, which helps to bring the lower shoulder under. You keep moving up, you keep moving the elbow out. When you've done your three, inhale, come up. Turn to face front, flip the palm. Exhale, hands behind you, 10 inches, fingers face forward. Bring the sole of the right foot onto the floor, stay in half lotus if you're in half lotus. Inhale, lift up, pratikriya, counter pose. Head may go back. And exhale, come down. Inhale, come up. And stay, exhale. Inhale, one more time. And exhale, slowly down. Down there. I know it's hard. <laughs> and then inhale, pick the left, right foot up and put it to the outside of the left leg. Raise the arms over your head. And twist to the right, Ardhamaxi and Drasen. Take any variation. That works for you. Look at the furthest point of the room you can see. Inhale. Exhale, twist to the right. And then close your eyes and look navel. At the end of each exhale, pause. Lift your chest. Yeah, not your chin. Lift your chest. Inhale, come to center, arms over the head, flip the palms. Exhale, Dandasana. Left side, inhale, bend the left knee. Exhale, knee out, foot to the inner thigh or half lotus. Inhale, raise the arms over the head, then take two vinyasas. And on the third vinyasa, hold the pose. So you see the way that's dropping inside your groin? Bring your hands down. Just pick, hold your foot and hold your knee. Okay. And now before you bring your foot into place, draw the knee closer to, the heel closer to your body. So you really seal that knee joint, yeah? And then when, what you want to do now is just bring this knee around like that. Yeah. Does that feel all right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So your knee in the ankle naturally goes down more. And your knees are closer. Yeah. Huh? Is that okay? Yeah. Yeah, try it. After your three breaths, come up and take the revolve. Janet Shashasan. Just do one vinyasa. 
And on the second time, take the pose. So you're twisting to the left and going down inside your right leg. Other way, Lynn. That's like that one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All our breaths when we're working out on our own are different. So you're working at a slightly different pace now, maybe to the person next to you, and that's fine. When you're in the pose, lengthen the exhale. The gaze here is gently upwards, but you can gaze upwards with the eyes closed. And goes the other way, goes that way up like that. Yeah. And you've got the hands are all the way around. It's like that way. And it pulls your bottom shoulder under. And then when you've done the three breaths, inhale, come up. Turn to face the front. When you're all ready. Bring the hands behind you. Practically a counter pose. One vinyasa, and then second time, hold for one breath. And really push down and ground through the inside of that left foot. You've got to squeeze the buttocks and squeeze the shoulder blades. Just really tighten up the back of the body. And when you come down on that exhale, pick the foot up and put it on the outside of your right leg. On the inhale, arms over your head. On the exhale, twist the left. when you're ready. Keep pushing out through the ball of your right foot, keep that leg active to help lift the lower spine and lengthen the lower spine. Eyes are closed. There's two drishtis here. It can be nose tip or marmas really with the eyes closed or it can be navel. If you're working on deepening the twist, the best is uh, to take nabby navel. And so it helps you concentrate on the uh, banda at the end of the exhale. So that pause is where you're going to gradually deepen your twist. And really concentrate on the length of that exhale. So you need a little bit more action out of the ball of this foot. Yeah, and you need to come forward and hug that knee a bit more like that. That'd be better for you. So you're more upright. And then inhale, come to the center when you're ready. Arms over the head, exhale, dandasana. Dandasana. Bend both knees. Cross the ankles, put the hands on the floor, a little hop or step back, chaturanga. Or you can lower all the way to the floor. And inhale, upward facing dog, chin down. Drag the heart forward of the shoulders and pause. So you stretch your spine. Exhale, go back down with facing dog. Move for a full vinyasa. Inhale there. And exhale fully, empty your lungs. With empty lungs, hop or step forward, Utkatasan. And expel a little more air from the lungs at the end of the Utkatasan and find the perineum, Murabandha. Keep the abdomen on the thighs and inhale, strain your legs. And then exhale, round the back of the head into the legs. Flip your palms, push your hips back, stand up. Reach up. Chin down. And exhale, arms widen down, Tadasan. Expand, bring your feet together. Inhale, arms widen up over your head. Flip your palm. Exhale, palms face forward. Inhale, arch back, chin down. Exhale, Uttanasana, forward fold. Empty the lungs completely. Little inhale, back of the heart. Exhale, Uttanasana. Little inhale, back of the heart. 
hold the breath, chaturanga, or push that back. Pause in the chaturanga, empty your lungs. Inhale, upward facing dog. Move forward into upward facing dog, not just up. And exhale, downward facing dog. And inhale there, and long exhale. Hold the breath out, Ukatasana, hop forward. Or step forward, squat down. Sit down, Dandasan. Find the front edge of your sit bones or sit on a block or a cushion. Pashimottanasana. Inhale, bring the arms overhead and flip your palms. Exhale, fold. Inhale, come up, flip your palms. You can bend the knees here if you're not finding the feet yet. Fine, exhale all the way down. And hold on to whatever you can hold on to. Use ha any hand variation, any hasta. Round your back. Relax your neck. Close your eyes. Look nabby navel. Whatever you're inhaling for, exhale for twice the length. Little pause at the end of each long exhale. Optional banders. Banders can gradually be anything up to five seconds. But don't strain. Might just be a little pause in the breath for you in the beginning. But you want to feel the end of that exhale. It's in that pause that the prana is activated in the spine and the sushumna nadi. And it's in that pause that your mind drops. Stay here for 10 breaths. Lauren, bend your knees a little bit. So you can get hold of your feet comfortably. Bend them enough so you can hold your feet. Yeah, that's it. And then just move forward from your hips. Just you know, bring, keep your knees there, but bring, so you get more forward rotation and then gradually start to straighten your legs. So you can actually moving more from your hip joints, yeah. That's good. That's good. Andy, can you just bend your knees a bit more as well? Bend your knees, bring your heels a bit closer and keep folding to your abdomens on your thighs and only then start to straighten your legs. So you're more relaxed. Remember when you're in the posture, there's no effort. It's just pranayama. All right, just a couple more breaths. And then when you're ready, flip the palms and inhale, come up. Exhale, hands behind you, 10 inches. Take your time when you're ready. Bend the knees or have the legs straight for counter pose. And then inhale, lift up. Squeeze the shoulders, head may go back. Push the inseams of the feet down. Exhale, come down. Inhale up. And hold, exhale there. Inhale, lift a little bit higher if you can, just nudge the hips. And exhale, slowly down. Come onto your back and relax. <clears throat> Feet can be a bit apart this time if you want, or you can just have to take rest, whatever works for you. If the feet are apart, the arms are away from the body with the palms up. If the feet are together, the arm palms are close to the body with the palms down. I can't remember what, where I read it or heard it, but there's a bit of advice in the scriptures that says if you're, if you're hot, if you feel hot 
Have the palms up. If you're cold, have the palms down. I think it refers more to pranayama when the hands are on the knees or meditation. But nice to experiment. And now we take the uh, preparation for shoulder stand. Feet together, arms by your sides, exhale. Bend the knees, hug the knees down. You can hold the finger, interlock the fingers, or you can hold the wrists, or you can hold the forearms or the elbows, but try and lock your arms around your legs. Keep your head on the floor and inhale. Sacrum can lift in this variation. As you exhale, squeeze the knees down. And then just release the knees about an inch, not much. And as you exhale, squeeze the knees down. Go right to the end of the breath, and at the end of the breath, pause. Release the knees a bit on the inhale. On the exhale, all the way down. And this time, keep exhaling, keep exhaling, keep exhaling, keep exhaling. Completely empty your lungs, hold the breath out. Mulunu Dhyana Bandha. As you release and inhale, extend your arms straight to the ceiling and your legs straight to the ceiling in a U shape. And push the toes straight up, point the toes, palms facing, point the fingers. Three breaths. Palms facing each other. Eyes closed. And then on the exhale, bend the knees, bring the heels down close to the buttocks. Optional, hold the ankles or bring the hands to the floor beside the hips. Inhale, lift the hips, open the chest. Keep breathing in, keep breathing in, set to Bandhausen Bridge. Pause at the end of the inhale, move the sternum towards the chin. Exhale slowly down. So the inhale is long now, the exhale is short. Inhale, come up, completely fill your lungs. At the end of the movement, hold the breath in, expand the chest, look hard with the eyes closed. Exhale all the way down. Do one more. Calm down when you're ready. And then inhale and lift into shoulder stand or exhale and lift into shoulder stand. It's worth experimenting to see what works for you. Half shoulder stand is fine. Legs up the wall is fine. Hips on a block is fine. Just get the body inverted in some way. Relax your hands down now, Gina. Just wherever you feel comfortable. First job is to establish smooth breath. So I'm gonna move that from under your head and put it under your hips. That's all right. Yep. Lift your hips up a bit where your hands are. I'll put that. Lift your hips up a little bit. Yeah. You okay there? Yep. Stay there, breathe. Look down into the throat pit or the back of the throat. And so you release any tension in the throat. Release the upper palate and the soft palate and the tongue, so crucial. Let the eyes relax. If you've got any tension in the throat or the face, the more vertical you go in the posture, the more that tension will increase. So if you feel any of that tension in the throat or the face, lower the legs and reduce the angle in the torso. But if you're comfortable with it, then you can push up straighter. But keep being conscious of releasing any tension in the jaw or the tongue. And with the gaze to the back of the throat, Ujjayi breathing. And 
And if you're comfortable, you can begin to lengthen the exhales. <coughs> Try to make sure your hands are symmetrical on your back. And ideally with the fingers pointing up. A little bit of space between your heels. Remember, you can come down and whenever you want to, or we'll do some vinyasas. Exhale, bend the right knee down to the right side of your forehead and stretch the left leg up. In any position, you can do this in half shoulder stand or full shoulder stand. And then inhale, come up. Keep the heel close to the buttock when you do that, of the bent leg. And exhale, left knee down, heel close to the buttock. Push out for the ball of the left foot. Inhale, come up. Exhale, both knees down. Pause, hold the breath out. Banded. Inhale, both legs up. Exhale, plow on these forehead. Inhale there and then lengthen the exhale, same as you did in the shoulder stand. Keep your back support if your feet aren't on the floor. Again, release all that tension in the throat and the face. Your hands on on the floor, hands like this. You should be on a. You better be on a blanket. We'll look at it at the end, Anastasia. Okay, and then release your hands to the floor and slowly come down. Lots of little breaths. If it's too much to come down on one long exhale, take lots of little breaths and control your descent. Lots of little breaths. Common instruction is to keep the head on the floor when you come down from shoulder stand. But if you feel any tension in your neck, you should lift your head and sort of roll down more in a little ball shape. When you are all the way down, inhale, roll over onto your stomach. Makras and counter pose to shoulder stand. Crocodile pose, bring the elbows under the shoulders and the forearms on the floor and the forehead on the floor. Elbows are in close to the body and short hands at shoulder distance apart. Bring your elbows close to the body, Lauren, so your hands have got to go back a bit. That's it. As you inhale, lift the forehead, the nose, chin, and the chest. Roll the eyes up with the eyes closed and look to the third eye. And exhale slowly down, pulling on the forearms to lengthen your spine. Same again, inhale, come up. And hold this time, look third eye, take three breaths. Long inhales. Short exhales. Charlotte, your elbows need to be a bit further forward. Not that much. <laughs> so you got you you are a bit more lifted, yeah. So I'd say, you know, that's that's better. And then after your three breaths, make your way down, come onto your back and relax in Shavasana. So same, same, same with you, your elbows need to be a bit more forward, Jane. Yeah, yeah, more like there. Can, can you come down and put your head on the floor still? Yeah, so that's fine. On the back, Shavasana, relax. Feet nice and wide, arms well away from the body, palms facing up, roll the head if you need to. Switch off with Jay breathing. Put your awareness in the heart, but not your gaze, just let your gaze relax.
just be aware of the place in the center of your chest, which is called Ridea, amongst other things. Try to feel where the breath begins in the center of the chest. And to where the breath returns. And that is the place where you rest your awareness. And then you can actually let go of breathing and just let everything completely relax your mind, your body, your breath, your lungs, all the big muscles in your body, all the small muscles in your body. The big joints relax. The small joints of the body relax. Jaw and all the facial muscles relax. The tongue is loose. The upper palate's dropped and the eyes are deep, deep in the skull. And you're just aware of the space in the middle of your chest, just in front of your spine. Inhale, bring your arms over your head. And from the left and then the right side of your body. Bend your knees, hug your knees, make your way to a seated pose. Or pranayama and meditation and use blocks, whatever you need to make yourself comfortable. Still quite warm. So we're gonna do Shitali Pranayama instead of Kapalabhati. Anastasia, have you got a cushion?
left hand chin mudra, right hand Vishnu mudra. First two fingers to the palm. Roll the tongue into a straw. If that doesn't work for you, you press the tongue up to the roof of the mouth and slide it towards the uh, top of the back of the top teeth. Exhale, chest up, chin down, through the tongue, you can. Inhale, shitali, head goes back. Chest up, chin down, close the right nostril with the thumb, exhale left, no sound. Release the hand, Shitali inhale. Chin down, exhale right. Shitali inhale. In down, Jira Band is an option. Exhale left. Do a few more rounds in your own time. Your chest up, Charlotte. Do one more. Well, you want to think about when you bring the chin down, it's like the head is a ball rolling down and the chest is a ball rolling up and they meet each other in Jalandhara Banda. The chest doesn't drop away from the chin, it rises to meet the chin. And when you finish, bring both hands to Chin Mudra. Keep your eyes closed. Feel your breath. Nadi Shadan Pranyama, left hand chin mudra, right hand Vishnu mudra. Close the right nostril with the thumb. Head faces forward, chest is up, chin very slightly down. Exhale left. Inhale left, look nose tip, third eye, soft palate, navel. Perineum, retain, look hard, exhale right, no sound. Inhale right, nose tip, third eye, soft palate, navel, perineum, retain, look hard, exhale left. Continue in your own time. If you're new to it and the gaze points are a bit too much, then just focus on the inhale and the long exhale with your gaze gently resting in your heart.
The next time you exhale through your left nostril, release both hands to chin mudra. Just using the power of your mind, lift your chest, relax your shoulders. Inhale left and keep the hands on the knees. Exhale right. Inhale right. Exhale left. Couple more rounds in your own time. Even if it isn't actually happening for you, imagine the breath alternating. Next time you exhale left, stop your practice. Shamaki Mudra, inhale, bring the arms to shoulder level. And then exhale, ring finger on the top of the eyeballs, middle finger below the eyeballs, ring finger just above the bulb of the nose, touching the nose. nose little fingers in the corners of the mouth, gently pulling the corners of the mouth apart, elbows lifted, shoulders down, chin slightly down, look hard, close the ears and begin to listen to the internal sounds of your breath. Release your hands, the chin mudra. Come into your meditation practice. If you have a mala, use your mala. Otherwise, come into your meditation practice in the normal way. Using your mantra, meditating on the mantra om or your personal mantra. Resting the awareness in the heart chakra or the third eye. Completely relaxing the mind. Upper palate, eyes, soft palate, tongue. Throat pit, back throat and heart. The awareness of breath, the awareness of space, the awareness of light, the awareness of the mantra combined 
in your chosen point of focus without effort or concentration you allow your mind to rest in the meditation practice And remember that the process of meditation is a process of returning. So when your mind drifts, all you do is put the mantra where the thought will be. Keep returning to the mantra. Don't struggle with the thought, don't judge the thought. No need to even think the thought, just be aware that the thought has risen with the mantra where the thought would be. Eventually your mind will become really happy hanging out with the mantra. And it will begin to relax. And then just let go of repeating the mantra and let the mantra repeat itself.
Of the repetition of your mantra and cup your mala in your hand. Drop your awareness into your heart if you're in the Ajna Chakra and rest your awareness there. Very slowly begin to deepen your breath. Keep very calm and still. And try to keep your mind spacious and quiet. For a few more breaths. Bring your hands into Anjali Mudra and inhale deeply for Om. 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 Triumvakam Yajamahe Sugandham Pushti Vardhanam Ovaru Samivabandhana Mrityo Mukhiya Mamrita Namaste. Everyone okay? Okay. So how did it feel during the whole practice? You put some extra bits in, didn't you? Did I? I thought they missed the trick and asana when you turned to the side to remove the bread. I didn't do the trick and asana sequence. There was a trick. Oh, I didn't do the revolve. Mm. Oh, yeah, there you go. Yeah, sorry about that. And we missed that out. That wasn't intentional. I just completely forgot. <laughs> uh, which is weird because I do I do this. I've been doing the sequence most days, but um, yeah. So what else did I do? We did the first section line was all as planned. I missed out Paravita Revolt Trick and Arson. We did the straddle board bend. The rest of it looks as planned, I think. We did Shitali and Tedakapalabhati. And the headstand I've put in, um, for those people who are proficient in the headstand, did I say this last week? You can do headstand as well. When you do headstand and shoulder stand, together it kind of increases the power of the potential of both or you can alternate and do shoulder stand one day and headstand the next day and you can do the same variations in the headstand that we do in the shoulder stand akram chasana with the knee coming down um, and holding the breath out with bandas on the third time with the knees together and so yeah so that's a, we did pretty much the full sequence apart from the bit I forgot, mm -hmm. but um, we did quite a long, um, we did a longer pranayama meditation and the whole thing. So we did about, we started about five minutes late. So we did about 50 minutes of asana and then the rest was pranayama, shamukhi mudra and meditation. And we're still five minutes before the end of the class. So you can do this whole 
practice it, I do this in about 45 minutes. And if I do the headstand and the shoulder stand both, I probably a little bit more, 45, nearly 50 minutes. Because it's good to spend a good 10 breaths at least if you can in the inversions and in the Paschimottanasana. But I almost feel like for a lot of people now, the way life is, that it's almost insulting to people to say, find 45 minutes of the day to do your yoga practice. So I don't, I never say that anymore. I used to say things like, you need two hours a day to do your yoga practice. If you're not doing two hours, get up earlier. Or like, don't watch telly or get off social media. Do it, I, you know, I've learned my lesson. Life's not that simple. So here's a couple of options for you. Yesterday I had 15 minutes to do my practice. In that 15 minutes, I did the first Hasta Vinyasa. I did two rounds of sun salutation. I did Paschimottanasana, the seated forward bend with the counter pose. And I did just a, a shoulder stand without variations in Shavasana. That was my practice, 15 minutes. So on another day, if you just had 15 minutes, you could do any of the standing poses. You don't have to do Surya Namaskar every time, especially in warmer weather when your body is warm. Triangle, both variations of triangle pose. Uh, you could just do that little standing sequence and then you could do single-legged forward bend and you could finish with pranayama. Yeah? Another day, you might just be completely knackered. You come home from work and you're really tired. You just can't find the energy to do asana. Everybody, anybody ever feel like that? No? Yeah? Okay, some of you might. So a good practice to do would be just the hasta vinyasas, the first two at the beginning, really opens up your lungs and gets your breathing going again. And then just do the pranayamas. The palabhati. If it's really hot, do Shitali instead. The Palabhati, Nadi Shadana, and you could just finish off with a little meditation. Yeah? So it's a really great way of just like re-energizing yourself. And the other way of doing that, if you're, if you're really tired in the evenings, is to just do shoulder stands. Do the whole shoulder stand sequence. You can just warm up a little bit with some Hasta Vinyasas if you want. Do the shoulder stand sequence and then relax in Shavasana. It's really rejuvenating to invert the body in that way after a long day, especially when it's hot. The inversions are really good to do in hot weather. Um, they really rejuvenate um, the body and the mind. Um, so, you know, you can, you can mess with this and make it fit what time you've got in your practice. You could easily make up 15 minutes, 30 minute practices, but you can use it in such a way that if you just look at it and a little bit before you start, you can still have a fairly solid plan of what you're going to do when you get on your mat with the time you've got. And that's really helpful. Um, any questions? What are you saying about when you're taking rest, things that might be like palms up and palms down? And... Yeah. So should the palms be up or should the palms be down? In relaxation. Well, then when you sort of like get to the point where it's sort of taking rest. Yes, okay. So we're doing two things. So there was a whole period of time where I so I wanted you to learn how it felt, where I when we did resting between postures, good question. I know the thing okay, the first thing I would say is like there's no hard and fast rules in this practice. It's not a, not a really rigid system. You can relax with it. One way of relaxing is with the legs together and they are together. So the, the, the instruction always is that the big toe base is touch. So, you know, when you stand in Tadasana, Tadasana, the big toe base is touch and the heels are slightly apart, which means that the femurs very slightly rotate in and it connects you to the center line of your body, Sushumna Nadi, you know what I'm saying? And your hands are beside the body, so you're like a stick, yeah? Danda. And, but when you do it on the floor, all you do is turn the hands that way. 
So basically you're doing Tadasana between sequences of postures when you take rest. Does that make sense? Because Tadasana accentuates the center line of the body, which is why all these Hasta Vinyasas and everything are ideally done in Tadasana with the feet together because the way it activates the central channel. Now, that's one way of taking rest. And there are certain postures after which, when you rest after certain postures, you would you always, I was going to say in my opinion, um, it is in my opinion, but <laughs> there's kind of things to back this up. After you do a mudra, which is Tataka mudra and Paschimottanasana and uh, Viparati Karani, like uh, inversion, shoulder stand and headstand, Ashwini mudra, any of the other mudras that some of you might know about, after you've done a mudra, you're always relaxed in this posture, take rest, because they're postures which are strongly working on the prana and placing the pra activating the prana really, really powerfully. And then when you take rest, what you don't want to do is go, ah, oh, I know. Relax. Because what the prana does is it sort of goes, ah, oh, it just all fades out into the extremities of the body to heal you and rejuvenate you. But what you're trying to do in the practice before you do pranayama and meditation is you're trying to hold the prana in the center, in the, in the, in the central channel. So that when you sit and do your pranayama meditation, it's much easier because the prana is already in the right place. When you gaze at your mama points, the prana is already there. You're just then going ping, 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 no, ping, ping, ping. You know what I mean? And when you do your meditation, you rest, you rest your awareness here and here, and the prana is already there. You've got all the prana you need. You don't. That's why it's easier after the asana. That's why I, the pranayama and the and the meditation follow the asana. There's a reason. But there's also something to be said for after some postures. And also, depending on how you feel, like some days, if you're just really tired and, you just, and you've, got, you've got to lay like this, it's just sort of like, it's, I think it's kind of, it can sometimes be a little bit counterproductive. Like if I've had a really hard day working physically, building or gardening, whatever I'm doing, and I just want my practice to be more restorative, then I'll relax like this in between the postures. And it changes the feeling, but it gives you a softer experience of the practice. And some days you need that to kind of heal yourself. You know, if you're very stressed, and you know, for some reason, not that as a yogi I ever get stressed, of course, but apart from most days. Um, <laughs> so, but, you know, if you're feeling like that, be kind to yourself and just go, oh, I've just got to relax in between postures and at the end. But if you're really in the practice in your, and you kind of like feel strong in your practice, feel centered in your practice, then I recommend you take rest between poses. Keep the prana where you want it. And I would say for somebody who's a more serious and advanced practitioner, who's just really comfortable with the whole thing, then you spend more, then I would recommend more that you take rest as opposed to shavasana in between postures. So it's not a black and white answer. But when you rest with the feet apart, the palms are always up. When you rest with the feet together, the palms are always down. Okay? Clear? So, uh, yeah, there you go. I could talk about even that little thing all night, but I'm not going to. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I hope you enjoyed practice. And we're going to do the same thing next week, and I will talk even less next week, less instruction. And then I think that one week after that, the final week, I won't be talking. You'll be practicing. You can have your sheets with you to follow if you want. And, um, and the other thing is, and then the next week I won't be here. So you can just come out and do it on your own. <laughs> Namaste. Thank you so much.